The small Massachusetts town of Carver, about 40 miles south of Boston, calls itself Cranberry Country, USA. It prides itself for growing cranberries for the Thanksgiving table. They call the berries red gold. About 1,200 acres, or about half the town, is classified as cranberry land, but only about 3,500 acres are actually used to grow cranberries. A first ever investigation reveals that mining for yellow gold, referred to geologically as carver sand, is the real cash crop for many so-called cranberry farmers in Carver, and neighbouring towns like Plymouth, Wareham, Halifax, Plimpton and Middleborough. The carver sand deposits and surrounding gravel and rock aggregate are a scarce global commodity and we are running out of it, according to the United Nations. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of aggregate is being mined and exported from southeastern Massachusetts and no one knows how much. Our government regulators are letting this happen with no environmental assessment or enforcement. The investigation pulls back the curtains and exposes a shady network of cranberry and mining companies and the public officials who have let this happen. The report and interactive map at sandwarssoutheasternma.org, it exposes about 100 mining sites in the region and many more have evaded discovery. The investigation results from years of evidence collection, eyewitness reports, drone surveillance, public records and personal experiences of residents and the work of community, land and water coalition. Sand is the second most exploited natural resource in the world after water. It is a particular type of sand with quartz-like grains used to make concrete, glass and many consumer products. The other aggregate materials like rocks and river stones have many uses. Demand and socio-economic factors is making it harder to find places to extract this sand from the earth and prices are globally skyrocketing. In southeastern Massachusetts, the price of a tonne of sand has quintupled in recent years. Sand mining has been happening for over 200 years. In 1825, Sandwich Glassworks was founded on Cape Cod in order to access the silica quartz sand for glassmaking. Small amounts are used to nourish cranberry bogs, but that's only a half to two inch layer every five years. Yet cranberry growers claim that they are using millions of dollars worth to take care of their bogs. The network of sand mining companies exploits the cranberry agriculture myth to run large industrial operations skirting the law. This is not cranberry agriculture, it's industrial mining. The sand is so valuable, it's worth killing for in other parts of the world. In southeastern Massachusetts, Activists are threatened and harassed. As the spotlight is being shined, the industry is in a frantic rush to excavate as fast as possible. This is strip mining, not cranberry agriculture or normal land development. It has all the devastating impacts of strip mining. Forests are clear cut, stumps and roots are ripped from the ground, and soils are scraped off and hauled away. Globally rare ecosystems, including pristine Atlantic coastal pine barren forests, one of three on Earth, interspersed with fast disappearing wetlands, coastal plain ponds, all that are wildlife habitats and entire ecosystems are being destroyed. The sandy, shallow, fragile Plymouth Carver Aquifer, a subsurface river of water, underlies about 200 square miles of the region and is the sole drinking water supply everyone relies on. Because of its sandy soils, it is so vulnerable to contamination, according to the US EPA, who designated it as an SSA in 1990 under the SDWA. The trees, vegetation and sand and gravel filter and protect the aquifer. Leveling hills changes water flows on the surface of the land and below the ground, exposing the groundwater to contamination. This is the ancestral lands of the indigenous Wampanoag people, whose people and archeology span is still here. Wampanoag Native American sites are recklessly desecrated by mining operations. Government officials recklessly allow sand to blow off the sites into the community and environment for years. Sand covers their cars year after year. Sand fills the gutters on their homes. They can't open their windows. 
They experience ear-shattering noise from rock crushing and gravel sorting and feel the earth move under their feet from trucks and equipment. Wetlands are destroyed. Soils erode into nearby rivers and streams. The operation leaves behind open pit mines, barren, sterile land where nothing can grow in human time, and are sometimes covered up with development projects or industrial solar installations with no assessment of the damage from mining. Investigations document that over the last 30 years, about 58 million cubic yards has been hauled away. Strip mining 2,500 acres, 100 sites, 2.3 million truckloads, at times more than one truck a minute on local roads, enough to circle the globe 1.3 times. The investigation reveals how the shady network has operated to evade local bylaws passed down by residents decades ago to prevent this destruction. In Massachusetts, mining extraction is regulated only at a local level by laws passed down by town residents. These earth removal bylaws prohibit the type of standalone mines exposed in this report and strictly limit mining to what is necessary for legitimate agriculture or land development. Permits are required. Courts call out scams that mining operations use to try and evade these bylaws and strike them down. But the state's politically powerful cranberry lobby and developers stack local boards with cranberry growers and mining operators, some who give themselves permits and turn town halls into printing presses for permits. The permits are worth millions of dollars in sand and gravel and are rubber stamped. Companies are allowed to monitor themselves and there is no enforcement. Local judges go along not wanting to interfere with town politics. The investigation exposes cranberry industry because about 75% of the mining is done by companies claiming to be cranberry growers. Cranberry companies own 62,000 acres but only about 23% of it grows cranberries. The rest is forested uplands with sand and gravel deposits. Sand mining is a lot easier and far more profitable than selling cranberries. Cranberry farming is break-even business at best, and the demand for cranberries flats as consumers reject the sugar-laden products and health benefit claims are not scientifically proven, according to the US Food and Drug Administration. Yet cranberry companies keep leveling hills and mining, claiming to build new bogs and ponds for their bogs. The companies use these claims to take advantage of land use protection intended to help farmers, not mining companies. AD Makepeace Cranberry Co, based in Wareham, is the world's largest cranberry grower and state's largest landowner. Inspired by nature is its motto. It operates reed custom soils in Carver, reported to be the largest aggregate mining and distribution facility in Northeast United States. Makepeace has been mining in the region for decades and has not built promised cranberry bogs and installed large solar in some of the sites. Makepeace admits that without mining profits, it could not survive. These cranberry companies obtain taxpayer subsidies in many forms, all while gathering sand and gravel profits and even mining in the aquifer. There is many ways to extract sand. The most problematic way is river sand mining, here dredging sand and gravel from the aquifer. To exploit a loophole for land development, some mining companies claim to level mountains of sand to put in subdivision roads, like this in Carver that claimed that the highest hill in town needed to be leveled for an innovative business park of self-storage warehouses. Or this site on Route 3 in Plymouth that town officials claim is just preparing the land for a manufacturing building. The investigation exposes what residents have known for decades. 
government officials at the highest level and throughout the state's environmental agencies have known about this but have done nothing. It's time to do something. Invest in stopping this destruction. Hold the industry accountable and assess and remedy the damage. Help impacted residents and find alternatives to strip mining our forests and communities. Put a monitorium on all sand and gravel mining. Contact your local state and federal office to speak out for clean drinking water and livable communities.